um, a bit of uh, a signposting uh, should you be distressed or in immediate, uh, uh, immediate need to speak to someone, there are organizations and numbers you could reach uh, to talk to someone. For example, in the UK, you can reach out to Samaritans on 116123. Or you could text uh, 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 to uh, text shout uh, to the number eight five two five eight. Or you could try an app called Hub of Hope that can help you to search for local mental health support. There are many many um, organizations and people who are willing to help. So please do not suffer in silence. Um, I will pass to Jennifer to talk about her area of expertise. Sure. Um, we have a couple of things available in Sweden, although sadly not as many as there are in the US or in the UK. Uh, the biggest organization is MIND, and you can reach them at 90101. Um, of course, if it is an emergency, it's 112. Um, and they also have a chat that's available 24 hours a day. And then the next one. Yeah. Okay, the next one is in the US. Um, so let me just move up. Oh, and that should actually be, no, that is, that's 211 if you need support. Um, 911 would be for an emergency situation. You could also call 1 800 273 TALK. Um, and there is also a chat option available if you're, if you're online. Great, yeah, and let's let's start our event. Uh, so I will pass to Jennifer to tell us a little bit about herself, and then it will be my turn, and we will take it from there. Sure. Um, so I'm Jennifer. Um, I am living in Sweden. I've been here for about twenty years now, but I uh, I'm actually American. Um, I have had problems suffered with mental health issues probably since um, 16 years old or so was the first time that I actually got help um, from a therapist um, and that was triggered uh, from a sexual assault um, and ever since that point um, you know I've had quite deep depressive uh, uh, periods during my life that have come and gone um, triggered by things uh, yeah, on, on every couple of years, it seems, um, but the depression is always there. It's just a matter of <laughs> how, how deep and dark the depression is. Um, in addition, I was diagnosed with ADD when I was 40 years old, uh, or just about 40, which is considered, I think it's a pretty late diagnosis. Um, and I, let's see, what else? I am an artist. Uh, I consider myself a mental health artist. Um, Everything that I do is to smash the stigma of mental health. Um, I work um, mainly with mixed media um, and I create art that is, some people would uh, perceive it perhaps as uncomfortable to look at because it raises a lot of questions. Um, I'm very loud and vocal about the issue. I'm very open about my background um, because I feel that if I could reach even one person and make them feel uh, even a little bit better, you know, help give them some courage to be able to speak out and realize that, you know, we have a diagnosis, but that doesn't define us. That's like the most, the least interesting thing about us. So many other aspects that are so much more important. And that's why I do what I do and we'll continue doing it. So. It's nice to have you here, <clears throat> Jennifer. Um, well, my name is Dorota. I, um, I perceive myself as artist. However, I haven't been an artist for all my life. Um, I turned to art um, after a massive mental health breakdown with a suicidal attempt um, after um, giving birth to my last child. Um, it was a um, very difficult period of time in my life. Um, and um, um, 
I was, you know, offered help and support from GP and, and counseling. However, at some point, as you know how it is, um, you, you finish the allowance of the talking therapy you can have. And then there is a big question, okay, what next? Uh, my therapist was brilliant. Um, the first therapies that I can, um, um, you know, attach that, um, <laughs> that uh, um, word to because the previous uh, therapies were absolute nonsense and never, never offered any, any help or release. But that particular person was brilliant and she wasn't happy for me to be left alone. She said that I'm not ready, but she couldn't change the fact that, you know, there was a waiting list for another lot of uh, talking therapy. So she offered um, to, for me to join um, some art therapy sessions run by an organization that offered the counseling as well. Uh, this uh, charity is called Mums Aid and they support mums and mums to be with postnatal depression. Um, I have joined those, session, those sessions, although I was very skeptic. But you know, it was said like, but you know, at least you will go there once a week and have contact with moms like you who have similar problems and maybe at least this will help if, if nothing else. And I said, okay, let's try. At the beginning, I was just making and creating very dark, dark uh, blots on the paper. But one day, something opened up, opened up, uh, opened up in me. Uh, and then I started to see color and the first image of color emerged. Um, and then I started to, to do more and more. And because I was very prolific in those sessions, the, my, the facilitator of those sessions um, encouraged me to try at home. She said, well, just do something at home, even five minutes, whatever, a doodle, uh, um, um, you know, angry drawing or a sad draw, whatever you want, just, just try to do it every day, at least for five, 10 minutes. And I did. I bought myself a sketchbook and, and some materials because during those sessions, I fell in love with inks. Oh my God, I just love inks. <laughs> they, the unpredictability of, of them and this that you can't really give them a control you sometimes urge for. Um, it was something that, uh, that was really, really um, encouraging my creativity. So I started doing that uh, and then I find out that, you know what, actually I feel much better and much more confident expressing myself uh, via images than words. Um, so I started to, to create images alongside all the struggles I experienced. Um, and at some point, um, you know, I was encouraged, like, why are you keeping it to yourself? And I was like, well, who would like to see it? You know, it's like, it's, 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 just, it's just so dark <laughs> and it's so sad, you know. Um, but, you know, with little encouragement and, and boost here and boost there, I opened the Instagram account, um, um, joined uh, a lovely um, uh, United Art Space hub. And this is how we met with Jennifer. Um, and, you know, the teaching there about, you know, letting yourself to, to express yourself and, you know, that everybody is really an artist. If you want to be, you are one, um, gave me the confidence. And I started to reach out to others who may use art in similar way or may have some mental health problems like I do. Because this is what I found, that I was so greatly misunderstood by people who don't have any mental health issues. Um, and I, I had a, a need to engage with others who understand, don't judge, and you know, that I could feel normal, if there is any normal, you know what I mean? Because they, they understand, they, they went through similar things and they, they don't freak out and don't perceive me as a weirdo. So um, I then joined a Time to Change campaign um, and this was a, a real life changer. I met so many wonderful people, so many wonderful champions who, um, you know, fight every day to break, a, break stigma and who notice that my art, um, you know, is, is really something that helps them to express themselves, you know. Some people uh, tell me that my images, um, you know, um, express something that they can't really describe with words. And, you know, those encouragements led me to where I am now. Um, so I proudly call myself artist, although I have no artistic education. <laughs> yeah, and I think it's yeah. I think it's really um, really common that people who don't have an artistic education are afraid to call themselves artists. 
Um, but I, I, it's my belief that, you know, if you're sitting there with a pen and you're doodling on paper, if you're creating, if it's uh, through dance or song or, you know, music or writing, you're an artist, you're a creator. And um, I, I, it's my highest belief that um, art heals. It yeah. definitely brings us to a place where, you know, it's easier to express things um, through what we can put out there creatively than we can necessarily speak. <laughs> Yeah, there's a huge science behind, uh, um, you know, the healing properties of art. And this topic is really, really a kind of river topic, you know, that the, the deeper you dig, the more you find. Um, but, um, you know, from personal experience, I, I just find that engaging in any creative, creative activity, any, believe me, it doesn't need to be a big masterpiece. Um, on right. the contrary, I, I work full time. I, I hardly have, you know, whole day to indulge myself in this, what I would like to do. I would like to paint. And a tall bar. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, um, but, you know, you can find uh, five minutes, 10 minutes here and there um, to, to do little things. So I do do a lot. Yeah, a lot to the extent that um, it was always, I was always questioned. I don't know if you doodle as well, uh, but I do doodle during meetings. And nowadays when they are virtual, because I have even more problem focusing on many faces and whatsoever, I very often doodle and I was so many times told off at work um, that it's disrespectful and whatsoever. So then I was uh, forced to uh, research and I found, um, I found the article about the doodling actually help you focus. And there was a study yeah. done on, on, on the groups of people who were asked to doodle during listening to some very boring um, kind of, you know, information uh, um, uh, given. And those uh, who doodled during that, um, I remember, um, I don't know what was the number, but it was about 30 to 40% more information than those who didn't doodle. Mm. So doodle. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I'm just going to let somebody in. I doodle constantly during meetings. Um, I, I always have. Um, I have a 12 year old daughter with an ADD diagnosis. And one of the things that they recommended is that she actually doodles uh, during her lessons at school. Um, unfortunately, her teachers don't necessarily agree with it. So that's something I've had to take up with administration more than once. Um, you know, she needs to be allowed because that's the way that she, it's, it's an easier way for her to process things. Some kids sit with their fidget spinners or their, what are they called? I always call them scrunchies and it's always Yeah, the, the kind of fidget toys, yeah. Yeah, or yeah. the squeezy things. Yeah. Um, yeah, but uh, doodling works best for her. But this is sad, you know, I perceive it as sad because I, I have also very hyper uh, uh, son um, and I was called to school uh, many times about that he's, you know, playing with things with his pen or whatever. Um, and I don't, I don't understand why is it perceived as disruptive when, when you know, he's trying to focus and he's just using the coping mechanism. Uh, but right. unless they hear, oh yeah, uh, he has, you know, attention deficit disorder or whatever, um, then it's, it's perceived as rude and misbehavior, which is sad really, because we know so much nowadays, but we still ignore so much. Uh, to you know and we do not facilitate the environments that that help people to function so that's very sad yeah absolutely absolutely and I can see how the system is really um, somewhat failing my daughter here in Sweden because accommodations are not necessarily made um, unfortunately and while she while she might have a list of things that she's supposed to be entitled to she goes to a private school and they are able to say no to those things. Um, so I definitely see her struggling with these things on a absolutely daily basis. And speaking from experience, you know, because I wasn't diagnosed with ADD until I was, you know, 40, 41, um, I struggled with these things my entire life. Um, I, you know, I never made good grades in school. Um, when it came to um, 
college or university. I went to four different universities before I got my degree. Um, I believed from a very early age that I would never succeed at anything. Um, I would compare myself to, uh, to everybody else. Um, I never felt good enough. Uh, absolutely stupid, worthless. I couldn't do art. I couldn't do math. I couldn't do anything as far as I was concerned. And back in the 70s and 80s, ADD and ADHD was um, not really considered something that girls yeah. uh, were diagnosed with. It was a boy thing. Yes. So I was always kind of passed off as the quiet, shy girl sitting in the back of the classroom. Um, but that's more because I wouldn't dare to ask questions. I would just sit there in silence and suffer because I never wanted to be seen as somebody that, that didn't understand. I was afraid that I was the only one. Um, and because my diagnosis came so late in life, I was never, I was never really given any tools um, on, on how, to, how to do things. And it's still something that I, um, that I battle with every single day in my life. I am unfortunately very unstructured and I have a hard time, um, you know, sticking to a structure with things. And so the earlier that kids can be diagnosed, the better, and obviously, and uh, yeah, and just so, getting as so how do you, How do you use now art to help yourself? What, what do you do? Well, art is a huge part of my life. I mean, I, I need to create. I mean, there's no other way to, to explain it. I need to create. It is my therapy. It is my sanity. It is uh, the way that I can express myself, you know, without using words. Um, I will say that a lot of times when I start to paint a piece, quite often I will journal on the canvas before I, before I even get started. Um, anything that I'm thinking or feeling, you know, it can be like, screw this day, <laughs> or, you know, anything, anything that I'm feeling, it can be something long, something short, and then I just cover it with paint. And that kind of starts the whole um, therapy process for me of getting all of those emotions out onto the page, onto the canvas, and being able to move on a little bit. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's absolutely saved me a number of times in my life. Uh, living in Sweden, therapy is not that accessible um, unless you go private, and that requires a great deal of money. Um, so it's definitely something that I have found is the most healing thing that I've ever, I've ever done. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, I just had to activate captions as, as we, um, there was a request. Right. Um, I completely forgot my apologies, uh, Therese. Um, um, I, I knew that you needed and, and it just evaporated from my brain. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Yeah. Uh, but it should be now uh, um, working. working. If, if it's, it's not working, working, Therese, on your screen, then you need oh. to... Oh, it is. <laughs> That's great. Thank, Thank you so much. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I will warn you that I do have awful accent uh, and those machines very often misinterpret what I'm saying. So apologies in advance. <laughs> it also misinterprets what I say. <laughs> and I'm a native English speaker, so they're not that smart. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you mentioned something about covering the page. Um, it's, it's funny how um, sometimes I do find um, a kind of release uh, in doing something in, I, I have this, I am called short tempered person and um, apparently my hair color, uh, although it's not natural, um, it's well, <laughs> <laughs> well chosen. Um, because I have these angry outbursts um, and they are usually the, the result of the illness that um, because I cope with so much and struggle with so many things, um, but I'm trying to keep it at bay, that it piles and piles and piles and piles. And when it reaches certain level, it just gets out in anger outburst. And, um, you know, um, since I started to engage with art, sometimes I do very angry scribble or, you know, just splash the paint angrily, just mix it. Um, but it's funny that very often when I'm doing it, um, at some point something emerges from it. It's like, I didn't plan to do anything. I just planned to get it out, you know, splash, you know, um, draw, 
you know, scribble. And then at some point I'm looking at it and I start to see an image. Does mm. it happen to you? Yeah, um, I do a lot of figurative mixed media women um, paintings, not in my most recent collection, but in my previous collection. And I start by just layers and layers and layers. So I can spend days just laying down different layers with different materials. And then it'll get to the point where I'm, I'm taking the canvas and I'm turning it in all sorts of directions, upside down and to the side and from across the room and up close. And suddenly I just see a woman that has, um, you know, emerged in the painting. And then I paint her. You know, you, you see something that resembles eyes or, you know, where a mouth is. And it's like, it's just magic. It's there. It's, it's there. Um, just one thing that I thought of um, really quick that we forgot to say in the beginning. Feel free to use the comment section to write anything you want, comments or questions. And then, of course, at the very end, we're going to have a QA session. So we will, um, you know, respond to anything. And at least for me, I'm an open book. <laughs> um, I think that's part of my ADD. Um, <laughs> so feel free if there's anything that you're wondering, um, you know, feel free to just write it in there. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, I find, you know, that you, you mentioned it at some point, at the very beginning, I think, um, that when engaging in art, why I think it's healing, um, because for me, I have a constant chatter in my brain, constant chatter. I do speak two languages and um, I sometimes picture two people, you know, in my brain shouting over in different language, you know, and, and I'm sometimes getting so confused. Um, mm -hmm. And I tried all possible things to relax. I have trouble relaxing. I tried meditation. I tried yoga, although I enjoy yoga because of the, the kind of, you know, uh, it's good for my body and whatsoever. You know, the briefing aspect of it, oh my God, I either hold my breath or hyperventilate. I can't follow the instruction. So I found that, um, you know, the only moment when I receive probably the similar state to meditative state is when I am engaged in painting. And to the extent that sometimes the time passes and I, I'm not realizing that, that, you know, it's already that. And it really happened last Thursday, I think, or Friday, whatever. I don't remember what day it was that um, I was painting, I was working on, on, on a piece that I was commissioned to do and I enjoyed it so much and at some point my partner came back home and I was like chatting to him you know how did they pass and he's like oh my god you're home oh my god you're home it means it means that it's oh my god I missed a meeting <laughs> I completely missed the time <laughs> yeah uh, so does it happen to you that you you just yeah all the time i run um, a lot of live studio sessions uh online and even today it was supposed to go from two to four and i noticed the clock at 5 30. and uh nobody said anything i mean everybody was enjoying it but yeah i mean i definitely get into these um these moments of flow and hyper focus and uh i mean it's like time just whew, we had a situation last week, I don't think she's on, but one of the women um, that, that joins my studio sessions is a teacher. And she said, you know, I can only be here for an hour because I've got a classroom full of, of people. <laughs> I need to go teach a class. Suddenly it was four o'clock and I was ending the session and she was like, I completely forgot my class. <laughs> she left the whole class. <laughs> without a teacher you know so it, it definitely i don't think they minded but um yeah definitely it, it takes you to a, or it can take you to a really good peaceful place where everything else just kind of disappears yeah yeah it, it does i i started to use my alarm and and timer very very much in my life because of it um to be able to you know uh, show up at meetings and whatsoever um so yeah the, this is probably a, a good tip uh, for any of you who would like to engage in some creativity that if if you have, find this uh, flow state um you may need to set your alarm if you need to be somewhere at a certain point yeah absolutely yeah. absolutely exactly 
Mm. Yeah, we have mm. lovely comments, uh, um, you know, um, uh, in the chat. Um, so we will be looking at it at some point. But I think that um, it is a time to perhaps start our little exercise. Um, um, so I will be performing first. And uh, you do not need to have any skills whatsoever. I just need to position my computer in a funny way because the software that I, I tried to install um, is not working for some reason. So I need to improvise. <laughs> so I will lower my screen and direct some light here. So <clears throat> I have a piece of card really. Uh, you can use anything you wish. Um, because I'm working with Sharpie, um, I will find my piece of um, cardboard to put underneath because they bleed through and um, it stains everything. Um, so what I will be showing you, it will be something that I do very often. Maybe I will reposition it to show you some examples of the doodles that I do during meetings, for example. Um, so here is the doodle. I just was, you know, doing lines and at some point, like, like we were talking with uh, uh, Jennifer, that um, it emerged that I could create two faces out of it. So I did and I called it uh, my baby's kisses because I was missing her at that point. She was um, first time back at Childminder. Um, at some point I was, um, you know, uh, doodling during the meeting and um, I did a little teddy bear. I don't know if light is uh, all right. Uh, yeah, that will be better. So here is a teddy bear. Um, I was attending a therapy and we were talking about um, um, different emotions and how they affect different parts of the body. And I had a difficulty, um, you know, making and making a note about it because we had to feed back to the rest of the group. Um, so I created a, a mind map um, and uh, and this emerged with different colors symbolizing different emotions. Um, so it's very easy actually, although it may look very difficult, I will show you that it's absolutely easy peasy and there is no right or wrong uh, light on it. So Perhaps I will, because it's like um, spring is coming and I'm very fond of trees, nature and whatsoever, it, because it uh, helps me greatly. However, recently the anxiety levels reached the point that I am even finding difficult to go outdoors and, and enjoy what I used to enjoy. Um, so I have an urge to, to, to make a picture of, um, of a tree. So it's very easy. I always start from a couple of lines. Um, so I will draw a trunk. And from trunk, some lines in whatever direction. Yeah, it stains everything. Um, so what I will be showing you, it will be something that I do very often. Maybe I will reposition it to show you some examples of the doodles that I do during meetings, for example. Um, so here is the doodle. I just was, you know, doing lines and at some point, like, like we were talking with uh, Jennifer, that um, it emerged that I could create two faces out of it. So I did and I called it uh, my baby's kisses because I was missing her at that point. She was um, first time back at Childminder. Um, at some point I was, um, you know, uh, doodling during the meeting and um, I did a little teddy bear. I don't know if light is uh, all right. Uh, yeah, that will be better. So here is a teddy bear. Um, I was attending a therapy and we were talking about um, um, different emotions and how they affect different parts of the body. And I had a difficulty, um, you know, making and making a note about it because we had to feed back to the rest of the group. Um, so I created a, a mind map um, and uh, and this emerged with different colors symbolizing different emotions. Um, so it's very easy actually, although it may look very difficult, I will show you that it's absolutely easy peasy and there is no right or wrong uh, light on it. So Perhaps I will, because it's like um, spring is coming 
and I'm very fond of trees, nature, and whatsoever, it, because it uh, helps me greatly. However, recently the anxiety levels reached the point that I am even finding it difficult to go outdoors and, and enjoy what I used to enjoy. Um, so I have an urge to, to, to make a picture of, um, of a tree. So it's very easy. I always start from a couple of lines. Um, so I will draw a trunk. And from trunk, some lines in whatever direction. Yeah, so I'm not really paying much attention what I'm doing in terms of how beautiful it is. I'm just doodling. I'm just doing lines. So when I have those lines, yeah, you see that they are nothing artistic really. Um, this what helps me greatly that when I see those sharp angles of the lines, um, they, they, they remind me about the spikes and anxiety um, uh, fluctuations that I'm experiencing. So I find that streamlining those lines gives me a lot of um, uh, relaxation. So this is what I, I would do. I will be now making them a bit round. So I am rounding the I don't know if you can see. I am then coloring here with the black marker, the angle, the, the sharp corner, I'm making it round, yeah? And I do that with every, every um, corner that is too sharp for me. So I will go everywhere here and make it streamlined, curvy, whatever you want to call it. I may add another line because I don't like that it's so much space here. And every corner I am making in a kind of oval shape, I would say, um, curvy shape. Um, for some reason, I don't like pointy beads. <laughs> and when this is all covered and when you color it in, it really, really become a beautiful uh, piece of art that I sometimes display, you know, in my home or um, put in my journal, you know, having a journal with, uh, um, you know, your sketches, doodles, maybe some phrases um, that speak to you, quotes that you found, you know, beautiful or inspiring, um, really, really helps my mental health. Uh, health and I believe that it does help others as well as I know many people do journal nowadays um, so I will be going like that on and on um, some people do um, listen to some relaxing music uh, during that but I personally love the sound of the sharpie on the paper although I know that there are so many who hate it um, but I don't mind so I am adding additional lines and making them curvy. So as you can see, that part looks like that. And I will go on and on until all of it is smooth and streamlined and nice to my eyes. And I find myself that because it does not require much of my how to say cognitive functions because I really do it you know what I'm doing I'm not doing an, an art piece I'm just you know connecting lines really um, I can do it during meetings without losing anything from the meeting really and um, you know and it gives me a great kind of fixation I would say I so fixate on it that very often the meeting finishes but if I haven't finished I will then stay on the task um, and when it's finished it gives me so much um, you know joy and satisfaction because I really love how they look like and the satisfaction from the fact that you know what I didn't plan anything nice really I just wanted to relax and it still looks nice um, so you can do even an abstract version if you don't want to do the three just do a couple of lines on your on your page and streamline them and color in whatever colors you know speak to you 
um, because colors you also um, can um, associate with certain emotions. Um, so depending on your state of mind or, you know, need at the moment, you can focus on the colors that provide you with, I don't know, relaxation, with, um, um, with peace of mind or something, maybe remind you something nice. Um, so yeah, I will just finish those few branches or whatever um, we can call it. Um, and then I will just show you quickly um, how nice it looks like when few of them uh, get colored. And this is what we will do. We promised ourselves with, ja uh, with I'm sorry, I wanted to say Jasmine, Jennifer, I'm sorry, uh, because Jasmine is my daughter and uh, she's always on my mind because I can hear some voices. That is why her name popped in. Uh, but we promised ourselves with, uh, um, uh, when talking with Jennifer that we will finish those, um, even if we don't finish it in the session. Um, and we will post it to you as, as our little gift um, after, after that event. Um, so I will now color in with, um, I use, uh, um, what are they called, um, felt pens. Uh, because for those doodles, mostly like if you have little times, uh, felt pens cover the, uh, the space very quickly and efficiently. And you find yourself that you don't stress that. So have little times, uh, felt pens cover the, uh, the space very quickly and efficiently. And you find yourself that you don't stress that uh, crayons, for example, not always cover very well. Um, so I then cover those white spaces and I'm using green here and there because, you know, I associate it with nice trees and leaves. And this one is beautiful that, you know, I did come out out of the line. You don't need to bother, but I am this kind of, you know, perfectionist and I'm not happy with it. So I'll just make the black line a bit thicker. And it doesn't matter. Can I can I interrupt you for one yeah. second? Because we have somebody asking if you can repeat the material. In the chat. Oh, okay. So I'm using a card. Um, so it's a bit thicker than, um, than a normal paper. However, I often use a photocopier paper because this is only the thing that is nearby and I can grab at the very short notice uh, when I'm heading to the meeting. <laughs> so paper doesn't uh, you know matter um, and I'm using um, I'm using uh, permanent uh, art markers with alcohol ink but any felt pen really will do if if it has this um, both ends so thick end I don't know if it's visible and a pointy uh, for smaller spaces if you wish to to you know cover smaller spaces um, so Felt pens greatly work because, like I said, you do really one move and it covers most of the area. So that way, if you are a person who may, um, you know, be impatient, like I am very often, um, and I want to finish things quickly, um, you will find that this gives you great satisfaction because you can do it quickly. You can do it, you know, look how quickly I'm covering those spaces and already few of them are covered. I will go also for some orangey bit. Um, I love uh, free, uh, trees in autumn, for example. Um, although I don't appreciate cold, <laughs> I love the colors of autumn. That one is a bit running out. This shows you how much I abuse them. So I will go for a different type of orange, um, maybe that one. And recently also my daughter started to copy me and she um, recently used some of my supplies. Therefore, and they are at the end of the year lifespan. Okay, so covering that. And I will go on and on until I cover whole the page um, because I am like that. I love the pages to be covered. Um, and I will be continuing that, um, you know, for the after the, the the event and definitely will send you the the end outcome for you to see and if you create something now or after the event 
do share with us. We would love to see it. Um, so we will also provide you with some email addresses you could, uh, uh, you could send it to, or you can send it on Instagram via messaging uh, service there. So um, I hope that it inspires you in some way. So I will now position, reposition my camera and I believe that Jennifer will be also showing us a, a technique. Um, um, I could not get it set up very well. Um, I'm not in my studio, unfortunately, and I don't have my, uh, my normal equipment. So this is the best I could get it, unfortunately. Um, first thing that I would like to say is that when I sit down and my aim with art is to uh, release or, or relieve some of my anxiety or stress or anything that's going on in my life, I start with a really, really simple breathing exercise. And I am going to show you, now I'm really, really horrible at breathing and talking at the same time. So I'm going to talk. <laughs> I guess I'll be breathing, but I won't be doing the breathing exercise. Yeah. And just show you. Talk, you talk, we breathe, yeah? This is the <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll talk, you breathe. And the other thing I wanted to say is I always, this is really hot, but I typically have, you know, a lit candle uh, near me as well, because I just, for me, um, a lot of it is, is about creating the right environment. Um, so always a candle. I always have music on that inspires me and that calms me. And then I, I try to be mindful um, about my breathing. So anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to breathe in for a count of four. Hold it for four seconds. Release or exhale for four seconds. Hold for four seconds. Inhale for four seconds, so on and so forth. And what I try to do is make a um, representation of this as I'm doing it. So here I'd be breathing one, two, three, four, holding two, three, four, exhaling two, three, four, holding two, three, four. And I can see that my hand is completely covering. So let me, um, let me try and position this another yeah maybe that's a little bit better so that you guys can see um yeah and i will do it for a couple of minutes um or at least a really large maybe an a4 piece of paper and try to do the entire paper and i think generally speaking <laughs> my breaths are a little bit more more rounded and my hand is still in the way i think i need to come from the other side yeah, Perhaps. that would be better. But I now my lamp is on top of the cord, of course. Let's see. There we go. We'll do it. We'll do it like that. That'll that'll do for today. Um, anyway, so I work with affirmations quite a lot. Um, a lot of that has to do with uh, me having low self esteem. Um, and a lot, you know, with my depression. Um, so I have actually created an entire deck of affirmation cards. And rather than buying them or uh, just listening to meditations with affirmations, I have found that if I look for affirmations that actually resonate with me, they're a lot more effective. Um, and so in doing so, um, I have two different options here. Um, this is just a regular index card, you know, really, really thin, flimsy, but they all come in the exact same size and they're extremely cheap. Alternately, I have a watercolor paper here, which I've taken from an A4 sheet and just cut down into nearly identical sizes, but I'm sure they're not perfect. Um, this can be done with any type of watercolor paint. This is a really inexpensive one that I have. It um, came with, I think, four different palettes or so, and you just kind of stack them together, um, you know, or you can go with, you know, more professional uh, watercolors. It doesn't really, it doesn't really matter. Um, 
And then the other thing that I tend to use are pens. Um, I use Posca pens because they're my favorite, but I know that not everybody has this at home. So you can use any sort of felt tip pen would work fine. And lastly, you just need a brush and it doesn't matter what kind of brush you use, anything goes. Um, so to begin with, I just wanna show you a couple of my favorite techniques. And the most important thing is to um, not be too set on your outcome. You know, this is an exercise to relax and de-stress um, and just kind of let go of control. And um, the way that I like to start is I have a water brush here, but you can, like I said, you can use any type of brush. I fill it with water or get the tip quite saturated and I might just make a circle just a circle. And I try holding the brush actually quite, you know, high to the top so that I have little control, less control over it. And then let's say we want to use hot pink. I'll just get some on the brush and then I'll watch the magic happen. I just dip it in. Just dip, dip and dab and let it move. It's going to do its own thing. And, um, you know, letting, letting yourself um, not control it is actually really, really relaxing. And then I'll take a second color. And for some reason, I really like the way orange and yellow, or sorry, orange and hot pink work together. So I'm just gonna, just gonna do that. And just dip it all over the place. Maybe go in with some more of the first color. And if you just give it a minute, minute or two, it will um, it will dry and the colors will bloom and and um, you know mix together. Um, so sometimes I'll just do you know several several circles um, because I find that very relaxing. So that's one one thing. Uh, and just let them let them do their thing. I'll come back to it in a minute so that you can see what's happened. Um, another thing that I like to do is just take water and just make, I mean, basically covering the entire thing with water. No thought net needed, no thought is necessary at all. Um, and this is kind of neat, but if you just take your, take your paint don't think about anything. Just move the brush all over the, the paper. And then we can take, oops, let me take some of this bright green. Add some of that. I'm almost out of this green. I think I must like it. <laughs> and with these um, more inexpensive watercolors, um, they come with a great range of colors, I have to say, and I don't use them nearly as sparingly as I do, uh, you know, my regular, regular watercolors. But this is something that I really enjoy doing. Then you can take, you know, some purple or, and just kind of splotch that in. And then a neat effect with watercolor is actually to take um, some cling wrap, some flat wrap, kind of scrunch it up make it all wrinkly and attach it to the watercolor, the scrunchier it up. <laughs> is that a word? No, definitely not. This is it. Get the messier, the better. We're going to set that aside and let it dry. Um, let's see. Another thing <laughs> when I'm angry, I really like to splatter paint. So here I'm uh, just filling up the brush with as much pigment as I can and just like, slamming it down. I love that too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a good way to get, get it out. Um, and then, you know, again, I'll usually use several colors and, and you can go lighter, uh, you know, do smaller uh, splashes as well, just by tapping it gently. Um, 
you know, whatever, whatever you want to do. The thing with uh, art is that there are no wrong ways to do things. You just go with what you're feeling, what you're thinking, um, and just remember to breathe. Um, the next thing that I would do, you know, there's another thing that you can do, and I actually don't have um, the right kind of salt. I tried to I tried to do one earlier, but I don't have good salt here. Uh, usually I would use like sea salt or what's it called? Like the, the flaky salt, the crystals, oh. crystals. Um, yeah, oh, yeah, e exactly. And it makes a really cool effect if you leave the salt on the watercolor until it dries and then you brush it off. Um, but once I tried to do it here, but it didn't exactly work because it was the one this was just regular regular yeah because cables. i think salt uh, lightens up the pigment doesn't it so if, if it, there was yeah yeah it does and you can see here it's kind of pushed pushed yeah. the paint away so you can get these really cool uh really cool effects um now of course none of this has dried yet but i can show you this is one i've done with the bubbles so you can see everything always dries a little bit lighter than um, than it looks when you first put it onto onto the paper when it's wet. And then what I would do here's one where I covered the entire thing. So now it's like you know the magic of television when they take the baked cake out of the oven and you know voila it's done. Um, <laughs> so what I would do now is basically take one that has dried and write my ass on my pillow because um, I spend a lot of time napping <laughs> or maybe even um, you know write on front of my computer because I spend an awful lot of time on the laptop and um, you know and then I might for example um, you know get out some more pens and I don't know let's see this is maybe not you're not going to be able to see yellow um, Something I find really calming is dots. I don't know. Let me see. Can you see this? Yeah. Not, not that well, but I, I will make a lot of dots. And just, just breathe and listen to the music and you know, make little patterns, um, patterns with the dots. And this is something <laughs> that I see in my art all the time. I think I have dots everywhere. Not quite sure what they represent. But uh, for me, they're very, very soothing. Um, and you can do all sorts of patterns, uh, patterns with those as well. And let's see, the plastic wrap, of course, is not dry, but this is one I did a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. And you can just see, it almost looks like, um, how can I? Yeah, we, we can see it. It, it looks yeah, like it. It looks kind of like shards of, I'm moving the wrong way, shards of glass almost. Yeah. Um, so this is, you know, a really easy, fun thing to do that doesn't take a lot of brain power. Um, something in just the movement with your hand and losing um, the need to control the medium, just letting it flow however it wants to flow, trying out different color combinations. Um, like I said, there's absolutely no way to do it wrong. And then, you know, leaving yourself with some sort of message that resonates with you so that you can remind yourself, you know, I am calm, I am worthy, I am enough, I'm doing the best I can, uh, I'm a warrior, <laughs> anything that resonates. Um, yeah, it could be a yeah. quote of, uh, uh, of absolutely. somebody famous uh, said and resonates with absolutely. us. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Um, or even, you know, a love note to yourself, you know, uh, something you would say to a friend, um, because I find often we're a lot kinder to our friends than we are to ourselves, and we should really um, be kinder to ourselves. So why not leave yourself a little note to, you know, to brighten your day. But um, yeah. yeah, so that was my, that was my quick little demo. That's great. Yeah, I think that it would serve uh, uh, greatly as a, as a reminder and those techniques that you show. Um, it's amazing, isn't it? That it's like such a, a, a simple thing, like 
make putting dots uh, not only can provide you with some relaxation but also create something that is uh, uh, you know um, aesthetically pleasing um, yeah so really you know um, it, it serves on so many levels isn't it yeah absolutely absolutely and I think the thing that really um, that I really enjoy is walking away with something that, that gives me a positive, um, and you know, it's not only relaxing, I'm going to move my computer, sorry, um, but that also gives you a positive message to yourself, because again, I think we need to, uh, we need to be kinder to ourselves, and I just made myself huge, didn't I? <laughs> and I can also see that I have paint that's splashed on my face, which is pretty typical. Yeah. <laughs> I, I constantly walk around with flex paint splatter all over me. Yeah, I remember one situation uh, when I was engaging with kind of dark uh, painting and because I work with inks and I have this awful mannerism of trying a color sometimes on my, on my wrist here. Yeah, and I'm right-handed, but left hand is very often used to push my hair, you yeah. know, away and stuff like that. Um, and I was engaging, and my and my baby was then sleeping. So when I had the doorbell, I just sprang to action, you know, to, to <laughs> right. open the door before she wakes up. Sure, and sure. When I when I opened the door, I was surprised that the delivery man just threw the parcel at me, like literally threw it, and I was like, oh my god, that's rude. And then when I was closing the door and turned my uh, posture towards to the right, there was a big mirror. And I looked like a shamanic person during the time. <laughs> Not only my hair was all over the place, That's I had awesome. black smudges on my face. No wonder he thought that he probably yeah. approached somebody who wasn't too right at that point. <laughs> right, right. I think charcoal is the worst. I mean, whenever oh, yes. I'm working in charcoal and then, you know, you get an itch or you whatever you get these black streaks everywhere and yeah. totally unaware of it yeah. i actually made a um an instagram reel or story or whatever it was where my daughter splattered green paint on my face because you know it's such a normal thing for me to have paint all over my face although it's not body paint uh, that i thought she would enjoy doing that and she absolutely did she thought it was oh. hilarious <laughs> absolutely hilarious yeah. yeah yeah splashing paint or inks or whatsoever it's um it's a, another kind of technique that because of those movements right, right. um you you are like shaking off certain emotions most of them really do it mindfully um that you know you think about something i am i am anxious i want to shake it off That's and right. you, you splash the paint of course you need to have environment for for it um because uh, um, certain aspects of my house are, are really nicely decorated with splashes. Um, <laughs> so you. if you Thank have you. A, a, a expensive decor, maybe um, do that in the garden or something like that. Right. Uh, but right. I, I find it uh, amazing. Uh, the yeah. same like um, drawing with a big movement on a huge piece of paper. I don't know if you ever tried it. Uh, yeah. but drawing not with your wrist but with your whole arm the whole arm yeah mostly doing circles um yeah. i find it uh, amazing and and very relaxing yeah, yeah yeah absolutely another thing that i do is i will have a canvas or whatever it is that i'm working on i'll apply the paint quite thick and then i'll just grab you know a stick or a ba back of a pen and just mark make you know scribble all over that paint and uh um, that's a fantastic way to get the get some of the frustration out as well. Not quite as you can't really breathe into that as well, yeah. but you cer it's certainly a good release. Yeah. Um, well, you know, I'm very curious if if anyone would uh, anybody would like to share the outcomes or maybe um, you know engage with um, asking us uh, some questions um, if. If there is anything, I don't know if there is anything in the chat. Oh, Fiona posted um, to me some um, some link, uh, but I'm not sure I can open it now because this requires a uh, login to Instagram, I see. But I think she found okay. you with, the, uh, with, with some smudges. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't see the message, but... Oh, yeah, because it's probably a private one. That is why. Uh -huh, okay. Oh, maybe that is why, yeah. 
yeah. I will have a look at it later. Um, yeah, um, so, you know, um, we showed few techniques, um, but also, you know, I think we talked about many more actually, and this is what I find myself um, often when engaging in any artistic uh, um, or creative activity that um, when I talk about it, I, I just want to share so much that I'm, I'm sharing more than I even planned to. <laughs> mm. uh, so hopefully some of those um, are useful to our audience. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, um, is there anyone that wants to share anything that they've... Oh, yeah. Okay, let me go ahead. Oh, two of you. Okay, wait, wait, Stacey. Hold on one second. I've clicked um, on ask to unmute, I think. Um, yes, you can unmute yourselves as well. Hi. Hi. Oh, there, there. Let me... Oh, um, back on mute. You... Oh, did I put her back on mute? Probably. <laughs> yeah. Are you, are you able myself. to unmute yourself? Wait, I've unmuted myself. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to touch Hi. anything. <laughs> um, I, I just wanted to say that what I quite liked about this from, from me listening to you talking and going through those drawings is... I don't, as an artist, give myself a lot of permission to experiment and make a mess and enjoy the processes. Yeah. Um, so like if I get a piece of paper, I'm, I'm planning to make the perfect piece. Yeah. And it's so stressful and it's like that white canvas fear. Um, so for, from rather than just my, my mindset and how I get through my day and anything that bothers me and anxiety, it, I can have a lot of anxiety around making art as well. Um, so listening to you talking about uh, giving myself permission just to, to play and to make something, even if it's not important to me, it's really, it's, 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 it's been quite, it's, it's affirmed a few things that I've been thinking about recently because I don't always allow myself to do that. And yeah, that was quite beneficial to me. Thank you very much. Oh, good. Yeah, good. I mute myself it. again. I, I have a I question. Don't know how. I, I don't a, know how. I have mute a question me, for please. you. Wait, 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 I've got a question. What type of materials or what medium are you generally working with? Oh, I, I work in quite a few. So I paint in oils. That's why I'm quite, you know, oils can be quite expensive and you're working yeah. with terps. So you're scared to use a lot of them. But right. I have just, I have recently, I, I spent a lot of time painting with my four-year-old. She has these cheap watercolor sets, these really crappy old brushes of mine. Perfect. And I'm Perfect. finding I'm doing, I'm doing some really fun stuff with her. And I find it very hard to free up my process because I spend so much time working so fine and delicately. Um, right. So it's been quite an eye opener. And then, you know, I did, I did recently go to an exhibition um, I, I specifically went to an exhibition because South Africa, the exhibitions are open at the moment, but it was neuroscientists from the, neuro, the physiological department of a university was working with um, ethnic groups that make African beadwork. And they were talking about exactly what you talked about at the beginning of, your, 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 of this live meeting is the stigma of mental illness. So the, the physiological department was making beautiful photographs of maps of, of, of neural pathways. Beautiful. And then they were matching them with this beadwork, which was spot on. The two together looked identical. It was, and that cathartic process of making something, you know, just the constant repetition and things like that is so exciting to me. It's so interesting because it does, you it has a cathartic process. What I, I what bothered me is that it was a group of people that put some photos up and then a group of people that made some beadwork, but there was no interaction. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like oh. what I like about what you're talking about going, you know, even after I had a kid, you know, there's a certain amount of stress and anxiety mm -hmm. and post postpartum depression. I don't even want to go there. One in, what is it? Two or three out of 10 moms experience it. And a lot of people don't even realize it and just carry on. And it right. hits them later. Um, I have a friend who's going through it at the moment, like six years after having a kid. And having groups where you can just experience that through a form of art therapy and basically finding cathartic processes is, is so beneficial and crucial. And it's so overlooked. It's like, so, so even this university, like 
that this department didn't even go and spend time making beadwork and understanding the process. Right. They took pretty pictures and stuck it on a wall. So where's the conversation if it's not interactive? Um, so, yeah, I was really excited to, to hear this tonight. I was hoping my four-year-old would go to bed. Oh, she did. Yeah, so like be part of and, and just and and understand what what you were getting at and even a small thing like making a doodle you know even the kids in school doodle please like let them doodle my goodness i i listen to audiobooks while i paint to shut out the the internal and external noise right because it's everywhere and you know kids kids doing maths at school how do they shut out the noise so they can concentrate they can't um, and it's it's fascinating that people just can't make those little connections and allow right. people the, these processes in order to help them, you know, feel part of and function, because mm -hmm. we all deserve that. We deserve to function. But yeah, yeah I've I've ranted enough. <laughs> I'm going now. <laughs> Thank I, I think I'm a bit OCD. I talk too much. Too much. No, it's perfect. Thank you so much anyway, for sharing. Thank you. I do want to. I do want to ask. Do you have oh, a yeah. link? Do you have a link to that exhibition anywhere? Can you share a I link? Do you, I do actually. I will send it to you. I'll send it to you um, on Perfect. Instagram. I'd love to I, see it. I think it. it was just, it wasn't a big exhibition. They were just part of an exhibition. And okay, cool. I, I wanted to contact the department and have a go, but I don't know what their situation was. Maybe it was a, a thing of COVID or funding, or maybe they were just trying to create a starting point. Perhaps. And that was a, it was a, it was a good starting point. So. Yeah, absolutely. Needs to Great. go further. <laughs> Absolutely. Very cool. Okay. Thank I'm you not, for sharing. I'll, yeah, thank you for sharing. I'll let you put yourself back on mute. I know Stacy wanted to. I found to it. Share. I found it. You, cool. <laughs> All right, Stacy, I'm going to try to unmute you and then I'm going to make you the spotlight. Yep, I just wanted to show. <gasps> Oh, I love now, it. Stacy <laughs> Stacy's also an artist. She's another one that's in the hub, which is United Art Space. And yeah, yeah. Dating, I think we is... were on the uh, at some events together, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I usually work um minimalist, monochrome, abstract, very straight lines, very sharp. Like you say, you don't like the pointy bits, but mine's very, very pointy bits. Um, but I, I started doing this and I've got to admit at the beginning I was like I've got no idea where to point my lines so um, yeah but I, I created it and That's gorgeous. I, used, I used something that I picked up in an art shop years ago and I've, they've been in a drawer all these years um, and they are water soluble wax pastels. Hmm, interesting. Is that like, um, is that similar to like oh what's it called the stabilo stabilo oh what are they called they're like for kids technically i don't i don't know woodies. To be stabilo honest, woodies. these are really difficult to get a hold of now these yeah. ones uh, Carondash is made in Switzerland and they're yeah. the most expensive piece of kit you can get and it's really rare to find them yeah yeah <laughs> I'm the best surprise of anything that you want to buy, even like Faber Castell or whatever, and uh, it's really <laughs> difficult to get. Yeah, so, Can I... well done for you getting them and then sticking them out now. To yeah, I, I I bought them because I was in I was in an art shop buying stuff anyway, and I saw them. They, they were at the counter as as a, as a an add-on. Yeah, yeah. Pretty cool little add-on bit. So I, I just I thought. Yeah, I'll just grab those. They might be fun. Um, I never really touched them, but I have been using them a lot recently. Um, but what I have been wanting to do with my work, because it is very black and white, uh, but I managed to get depth and detail just by using black and white, but I want to add colour. And just doing th this one, because can you see that it's like... Amazing. Well, I've actually gone, mm, I quite like this, and I'm going to start exploring this. <laughs> Oh, wonderful. My current works for future projects because I this really... One, this one, Stace. Right <laughs> this yes. one, right here. Yes. Yeah. In colour. Oh, and I have to say as well, when we were talking earlier about meditating before doing art or to help with the mind. Um, I started meditating about seven weeks ago. Um, and I just want to put a warning out there that it can trigger some severe reactions. Not, not in a negative way. 
but there could be reactions that you're not aware of because I wasn't aware because something happened to me and now I can't go back. <laughs> mm. um, so I experienced something called an awakening. I'm not going to go on too much about it, but um, I had a full on awakening and I, I'd never heard of it before, didn't know it was going to happen. And when it happened to me, it was like um, everything was different. Everything could change. Everything I looked at was different. Everything I felt about things were different. I didn't feel the same about the same things as what I did before. So it was a massive, massive, hmm, not, I want to say blow, <laughs> but yeah. not in a negative way. It was just like, whoa, everything's changed. Hmm. I, I even looked at my family different. I look at films different. I look at food different. Everything was different. And I really wasn't prepared for that. So I just want to say from that perspective with meditation just be careful <laughs> but enjoy it as enjoy well it. because it's it's such a powerful tool i it's think incredibly powerful and and since doing since that's happened my my artwork has just literally started pouring out of me uncontrollably yeah. every yeah. day all the time and if i struggle i just meditate and out it comes and i've never done that before amazing wonderful <laughs> Wonderful. Thanks, Stacy. <laughs> You're doing great, Jennifer. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anybody else who wants to share? No, that's okay. No, oh, Karina nice is sharing. Oh, 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 Abby. And Abigail, oh. yeah. Okay, let me. Wow, love it. So, um, Wow. I know some of these are absolutely amazing. And I have to say, these are the artists in the group, just in case anybody else is feeling um, a little bit uh, intimidated. Um, these are all people that are that are in an art group uh, with, <laughs> with both of us. So, so let's see. Let's see. Yeah. Ah, so you did some dabbing too. Very cool. And your other one was gorgeous. Thanks. Hey, you can hear and me, right? I can talk I, to you. I can, I can hear <laughs> Hello, you. Hello, everybody. <laughs> and Abby's in South Africa as well, so. And has an exhibit on at the moment. It's still up, isn't it? It finished last week. I did it. Okay. Shame. Yeah. Absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. I love the white Thanks. space, it was... the borders that you've left around, around mm. everything. That's, that's really fantastic. It was really nice. I liked lots of the things you said, the breathing, you know, yeah. I, I don't think I haven't made the connection with the breathing and the, even though I love, I love breath. Like I'm a big Oma. Oh, you know, I, I really like the vibration in my body and I've done right. lots of things about breath and breathing. So it was nice. I'll, I'll do the, yeah, Have you inhale, you hold, exhale, the, hold. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it really, the thing that I really like about it, uh, and I forgot to mention, if you're feeling a lot of anxiety, because you're not mm. only counting and doing the breathing, but you're moving your hand, you have that movement, it leaves very little space in our brain for the anxiety, because all of our focus is going somewhere else. And so uh, it's a really good way to just kind of, you know, reduce um everything that you're all the negative things that you're feeling so it's definitely worth a shot um you know anytime yeah. that you're feeling it very yeah. nice i've i've got night i've got notes here i think lots of those things are going to be very nice to try oh, and um, make, make time to try them you know when you when i hit a you know my ups and downs aren't as vigorous as they used to be Right. But um, things like this and the rituals of candles and the rituals of the music and the breath and all those things. So it's just going to add to my toolkit. Thank you. Oh, good, Lovely. good. Thanks. Oh, I actually have different playlists, um, you know, programmed on Spotify, depending, depending on my mood and, um, you know, whether I need uplifting or whether I need calming down, <laughs> whether... <laughs> Stacy mm. has her jellyfish. I can see. Yeah. Do you watch gel? You watch jellyfish, don't you, Stacy? <laughs> Just the movement, you know, I think is is quite 
yeah Qu quite a calm i love jellyfish uh, mm -hmm. yeah when i go to aquarium or anything like that i always fixate and stay there the longest That's lovely yeah. they are lovely yeah they are very cool all right i'm gonna put you mute okay. again or actually can you can you mute yourself because i'm not sure how to do that and i know there was one more person that wanted to share Fiona, okay, I'm asking to unmute you. Oh, Fiona is an artist as well, right? Yeah, it depends what the day is. <laughs> but I sent I sent you a friend request on Instagram. I've just accepted it, yep. So okay. <laughs> I'm, I guess I was an artist, then I was an architectural student, then I did admin and did absolutely nothing creative, then I did back to art, social media, and now I'd say I'm a mental health activist and artist. Bravo. So, oh, yeah. yeah, definitely the stigma fighting. I'm one of the Time to Change champions in my local borough. I've um, been doing it for about 11 years. But no, I, I only did this exercise for the first time today. So I just did a really little tree. Don't know if oh, you can I see love that. <laughs> Absolutely. And just yeah. made some notes so that I can have a, have a go at it later um i did just two little blobs there and just a little couple of notes wonderful I'll be trying wonderful to Brilliant. Much. And, um, that's, that's yeah. amazing amazing and requests happy to do it my my instagram hasn't been used very much for a long time because i haven't been well but i'm trying to reactivate it so yeah it's a really cool. you can put a handle in our chat if you yeah. wish others to follow you it's as just, well it's just a really good yeah. way i think especially we forget during lockdown that um we've maybe got some logins for stuff and sometimes it's good to just reactivate stuff <laughs> mm. yeah <laughs> and i i love the drips and the painting behind you i think that's really relaxing to just watch the paint and you know help it encourage it to run beautiful absolutely beautiful Thank you. Great. Thank you for sharing. You're welcome. Good Let's mental see. health. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't hear. I said good mental health, everybody. Ah, oh, thank you. Indeed, indeed. And I think that we we were well. I work where you um 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 activate um advocate for mental health. You are from Louisham, Fiona, aren't you? Yeah. So I'm sure we will we will meet at some point when it's allowed. <laughs> And I think Nat uh, has uh, her hand up as ah, well. Okay, I'm going to unmute you and spotlight you. Hi everyone. Hello. Uh, I did this, the first one, I started it, but I kind of stopped it. So I did the, um, the watercolor one. Oh, you've made, <gasps> oh wow, you've got flowers and, and, uh, Lashes and dots and lines yeah. and everything. That's fantastic. You've even Beautiful. signed it, signed it and dated it. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I really enjoyed it. It was really nice. I love drawing. Um, my not specialty, but I'm self-taught in um, drawing abandoned buildings. So oh. the amount of detail I I put on those, it's really helping me with with my mental health and. It's it's incredible artists. I wish in the future I can do art therapy. Um, but yeah, I'm still still new at it. So uh, yeah, yeah, I really enjoy this. It's so fantastic. relaxing. Um, good, I didn't good. know about the um, the droplets that we can do with the pen with the paintbrush mm. that can be used to get the anger out or the frustration and. I am definitely going to do that when I'm upset. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You just need to focus on it. And, uh, you know, when, when you do those splashes, you need to um, try to uh, project that you are taking this out of you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've actually dipped my hands in, in paint and just <laughs> all, over, all over a canvas as well. Just anything to get that aggression out. And definitely, I mean, try journaling or writing writing your thoughts on a canvas before you apply the paint I mean for me that's one of the um, strongest things that I can do because you're getting it out and then you're covering it up you know so so it's yours you know it, it's your secret nobody else has to know about it oh that's awesome I'm, I'm writing it down <laughs> okay cool cool great, great. thanks thanks for sharing 
we are uh, running close to to the um, you know oh, yeah. of the meeting but kat uh, would like to share so let's give kat an opportunity i started with a tree but i did not end up with a tree at all i ended up with like a funny hand what oh my god that's brilliant that's gorgeous that matter. sometimes it's like that that something else will emerge and that's it, fine yes, yeah absolutely. brilliant i see flames <laughs> 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 like a very That's, delicate hand. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. I mean, but it's it's so nice when the art takes its own direction. You know, when you when you start with maybe one thing in mind and um, it just does what it wants to do. You know, yeah, That's I, do when you... of, uh, I do a lot of doodles. Uh, I'm really struggling with my work, and um, I have some difficulties uh, with what I'm achieving in my life. Uh, I have no children, no pets, and for me, my career was everything, and I think I've been undermined a lot. Okay. So I've decided that this year I was going to do a lot of art, and I am not artistic. I've always been told I was like rubbish. You are. You, look <laughs> at what you just what did. So uh, I'm trying very hard to uh, concentrate on other things that make me feel good, and doodling, I do Zentangle, and I really like that because it's very specific, and I am a quiller. Um, and being a quilling artist is like very specific. So when I start doing um, things that I don't expect, it's very unusual for me. So it's like over, you know, going over these fears of not being perfect because quilling is, has to be perfect because the, the shapes are accredited. You can't like come away from them. They're just the way they are. And you don't, I don't want the hole in the middle because I hate having the middle, you know, with a hole in my paper. It has to be perfect. So I do it with my fingers until I actually get it without the hole. So uh, working with watercolor or anything with a Sharpie where I don't control because you just have to go with the flow. For me, is really going over what I thought I was able to do. So, so that right. was really helpful tonight. I really enjoyed the talk. Um, it's so late and I've had such a week and I'm still here. I can't believe it. Oh, oh it's I'm so glad. nice to have I'm you. Glad. Yeah. I have to ask, has anybody tried alcoholing? No. Oh, I love alcoholic. Oh, that's fantastic. I absolutely love it. Really yeah. nice. And encaustic it's art. I love encaustic yeah. art. Yeah. And I can release. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's, there's no control. I mean, I guess there is, you know, people that are really fantastic at alcohol art can, can control it. I can't, you know, I just do it for a complete release. I mean, there, the alcohol ink is flying off the paper and, you know, <laughs> then I'm trying to get it back onto the paper with my heat gun and my hair dryer, and, and you just, um, I have no control and I love it because you just have to let go and in the end you always always come out with something gorgeous always with alcohol link so i i highly recommend it to anybody that wants to wants to give it a try i think it's the brightness the brightness and the splashes are so beautiful yeah and i find it's so fluid um you know it reminds me everything reminds me of the ocean or the sky or mm. yeah it's they're just they're gorgeous yeah. No, gorgeous. <laughs> yeah. Well, I thank you think, very much. Thank you. Thank you. I think we're at our cutoff time, aren't we? Well, we we are on the dot. <laughs> on the on the dot. Yeah. 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 Gosh. So I think that yeah, it's it, for some of you, it's very late, isn't it? Um. Um. I think Jennifer that um at your end it's an hour later than in the uk so <laughs> that's okay um yeah it's Friday. It, it was gorgeous having having these conversations um today and and you know sharing with you something that helped us um and you know um i think that we will be doing something more together with jennifer because we, we really really enjoyed working together and um it was so fascinating to have you all here and we hope that um, it helped in some way or inspired um, and that we will meet again very soon. Yeah. Thank you so much. If you took away even one thing, I'm thrilled. Um, and definitely, you know, keep in touch with us. You have our contact details. Um, we'd like to connect with all of you. And yeah, thank you so much for, for being a part of our night. We, we appreciate it.
I will be sending an email to all attendees with all we talked about, with um, the questions that were appeared about materials. We will uh, compose it together with Jennifer and probably by Sunday you should have something in your email box with all the links and, um, and everything we shared today, really. Yeah. All right. Thank you, everybody. Right. Thank you and have a lovely night. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you very much to the organizers. Stay well, everyone.